Mr. Rahul Magan here is the Chief Executive Officer of Reji Consulting LLP and today we would be covering a very dedicated topic which is on credit spread sensitivity in banking books. But before moving this video let me elaborate something about Reji Consulting LLP. Basically we are Treasury Consulting PT Limited which is a Singaporean entity and we are a Singaporean based multinational whereby we are covering almost 8 business domains and 44 business eight business verticals and 44 business domain and I'm extremely pleased to share that the company on a revenue wise is doing wonderful our top line is very good our uh, order book is very good and now we are looking forward for the second office in Singapore and hopefully we would be having second office in Singapore uh, from 17th of June we are offering almost 135 training programs as of now you are you are most welcome to visit our training programs via www.fixedincome.global here you will get five types which is functional forensics regulatory technological and information technology our endeavor is that just like Coursera EDX and there are multiple platforms now what these platforms are actually doing these platforms are taking the courses are taking the courses developed by somebody and they are putting the courses on their platform and whereby they are getting it solved now I understand that people like a platform like Udemy and Coursera, there are a lot of free courses also. In fact, Google also offering free of courses. But we wanted to create a platform which is equivalent to EDX, Coursera and all. However, whereby maybe probably in the next one year, we will change this number which is currently 135 to 350. And hopefully this number will continue to grow. So I might not be surprised maybe three years down the line when the company would be five year old company we would have more than 600 training programs which, which we would offer. So just visit www.fixedincome.global where one of the tabs is training. You can visit that and you can choose your training program. Everything is pretty clear. You can just fill the form and you can get yourself nominated. Now here we go. Today we are going to talk about a very sensitive topic, a very sensitive to topic which is currently there in the media also, as usual not in India, which is credit spread sensitivity in banking books. And to explain that, we have taken an example of a bank who literally needs no introduction across the globe, which is Goldman Sachs. Now, I don't know how many people are reading one business newspaper in a day or how many people are actually watching Bloomberg TV and so on and so forth, but suppose you would. You would get to know that you should have that information that few weeks ago JP Morgan Chase was in news. Not for the good reasons. In fact, two big banks was in the news. One is JP Morgan Chase and one is RBS. Royal Bank of Scotland, RBS was in the news because Royal Bank of Scotland was agreed to, not was, is agreed to uh, settle their, uh, the manipulation which they did in the mortgages by paying approximately 4.9 billion dollar to DOJ Department of Justice United States of America. On the contrary United States of America has clearly said that boss we are not interested in that so we have to go with the law wise process and you know that when the DOJ will settle it it would be three times four times maybe five times who knows right and RBS financial position is not pretty good across the globe and they are selling their assets is just like they are selling anything. So asset stripping is going in RBS. That is why RBI is RBS is, uh, you know, on, on a very on a very early note wanted to settle this. Another bank which was in news was JP Morgan Chase, and there's a very good discussion that has happened with the Bloomberg also. Now JP Morgan Chase was in the news because JP Morgan Chase credit spread risen on an exponential go on an exponential basis. Now actually, bank always feel that the credit spread should have been reduced. So example, if the CDS spread of JP Morgan is trading at L plus 250 bips, JP Morgan would always want it should reduce to 250 to 230, maybe slowly, slowly to 200 and then to 210, then to 200, then slowly, slowly it should get down because this is, this is good for bank. Why JP Morgan? In fact, every bank wants that. But JP Morgan was on a, on a group level. Now, please note that this is the story of group level. JP Morgan Chase was in news because the credit spread rise now, under Basel 3, Pillar 2, under ICAP, there is a guideline, in fact, two guidelines which was posted by the regulators. One is known as IRRBB. We already had elaborated upon that yesterday, which is interest rate risk in banking books. Another guideline says CSSRB, sorry, CSSBB, 
which is credit spread sensitivity in banking books. This both impacts the, you know, a bank. Now, when, and first of all, there should be clarity in the mind for everybody that what this both stands at. Now, I double R double B, I'm writing here, and C double S double B. This is only about the interest rate, interest rate exposure, like immunization, gross immunization, net immunization, dollar swaps, reverse dollar swaps, forward rate agreement, caps, collar, range forward, floaters, linkers and all. This is only about interest rate. It has nothing to do with the cash flow. So here the, here the bank role is to make sure that boss at the group level, we should not be, we should not be, you know, in a situation that we would be facing the interest shock. And what are the three type of interest shock? Parallel up shock, parallel down shock, short term up shock, short term down shock, steepener shock and flatter shock. There are 9% 9, 9 of the people who even do not know what are the six type of shocks which we are talking about. But the another compliance is completely different. So example one we are talking about US and one we are talking about China. Both are big continents as far as the land is concerned, as far as the power is concerned. But both are completely independent company, uh, in independent countries. This we are talking about C double S double B. Now in this the guideline says is to make sure that companies should not be on the verge of credit default. Now please note very carefully, there are two important things which we need to understand very carefully here. When it comes to CSSSB, there are two important aspects which regulator wanted to talk about. One is a default by an entity, one is a credit default by an entity. Now default by an entity means, let's take an example, because we are taking an example of Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, let's write me here, Goldman Sachs is doing a deal with Credit Suisse and due to any any market related reason or pricing related reason the Credit Suisse went into big messes and 2008 is nothing none, it is, it is something which everybody knows about this is what something which, which has happened now because of this the entire stress the CDS of, of Credit Suisse went extremely high the impact would be on the Goldman Sachs in the bank market because Credit Suisse took a position with CGS, GS might have taken the position with Standard Chartered, Standard Chartered with Deutsche and the cycle is completely long. Now everybody who is in this cycle and till the ultimate beneficiary, everybody is, is in the mess. So one is a default, one is a credit default. Now here Goldman Sachs has not defaulted. Goldman Sachs is a healthy entity which is doing pretty good. But there is a credit default which is looming on the Goldman Sachs because of Credit Suisse. That is a difference. So this regulation, which is CSSSB, is not talking about the default of an entity. Although on a personal note, I tend to disregard that. In my personal intervention, when a regulator is making a policy of IRRRB, interest rate risk in banking book, and CSSSB, which is credit spread sensitivity in banking book, it's a duty of the, of the regulator to also make sure that the bank should not default because of their own reasons also. But anyways, this is a long story, we should not contest that. So here we are taking an example of Goldman Sachs, which is number one bank in the United States. They don't need any introduction as far as this entire planet is concerned. We have taken five treasury desks of Goldman Sachs and all treasury desks are playing their independent role. Example, Goldman Sachs US treasury desk, Goldman Sachs European treasury desk, Goldman Sachs ANZ, Goldman Sachs Latin. Latin stands for Latin America. Now in this US there are so many uh, states like Philadelphia, Texas, California and there are so many. And in Europe also Denmark, Sweden, London, you know and you know. ANZ not to mention Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Thailand, Philippines, Australia, you know Tokyo and all. Latum, Latum stands for Latin America, right? Brazil and uh, all these kind of countries. Now they having so many clients which they are dealing with. Now I have bifurcated this into four categories. One is the interbank dealings. One is the corporate deals. One is the intrabank dealings. That is something very important. Unfortunately, from a pricing perspective, everybody talking about that. It's an interbank deal. But do you know that big banks like Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, JP Morgan, Standard Chartered and, and almost everybody, 
they are well known for the interbank dealing also example philadelphia desk is dealing with anz reason philadelphia desk got a trade of dollar to aod dollar to aussie dollar and who gives you the best pricing this is australian desk or maybe philadelphia desk dealing with the latin america considering brl now brl is a brazilian currency now there are four places where they are dealing with one is the interbank dealing one is the corporate deals one is the intrabank dealing and one is the non deliverable position keeping this is very important in my personal perspective for a bank like goldman sachs f all four are relatively very important now this generates one report which every bank give to the local regulator at the end of the day in india this report is known as noop net overnight open position which sitting today is approximately 6% of net worth of the bank so whatever is the net worth of goldman sachs india so goldman sachs india can maintain 6% of 6% of that uh, basically in their non deliverable position keeping in their in in their in their net overnight open position now let's take an example goldman sachs dealing with credit suisse now we have taken example of credit suisse let's take an example here goldman sachs dealing with jp morgan now there is a client of goldman sachs which is treasury consulting llp so treasury consulting llp would be a client of goldman sachs because our singaporean entity would directly deal with the goldman sachs very simple and that would soon be a reality treasury consulting dealing with goldman sachs selling dollars goldman sachs selling dollar to jp morgan jp morgan selling to standard chartered standard chartered selling to barclays and barclays selling to ubs ubs selling to deutsche and doshe and the list is pretty long well the list well the, the 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 relevant list is pretty long now goldman sachs he is the interbank partner for so jp morgan standard chartered is an interbank partner for standard chartered barclays is an in, in, is an interbank partner and so when goldman sachs will take a position of me goldman sachs will keep an eye on the credit worthiness of our treasury consulting llp as well as the credit worthiness of the jp morgan chase they are not bothered about the sequence because i am bothered about jp morgan chase not till the doshe this both is known as cba credit valuation adjustment goldman sachs will also take a position of his credit risk which is known as dva which is known as debit valuation adjustment now that credit valuation adjustment would be taken into the pricing of a relevant client now since i am an exporter i would be getting the less price maybe if i would have been an importer i would have got again more price because in case of exporter they will deduct in case of importer they will add ultimately it's a it's something which is the pnl impact for both either an exporter or an importer now what would happen to hedge this Goldman Sachs would have their own prop system. Prop stands for proprietary trading desk. Generally, the banks are using Mulex, Calypso. They are using some third-party softwares also. But the big banks like Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, J.P. Morgan, they have their own proprietary valuation softwares. Of course, uh, you know they were taking the feed from Reuters or Bloomberg or MT4. But ultimately, valuation is come from that pricer. So valuation is something which they are not dependent upon that uh, feeders. because in our technical language in our treasury language bloomberg reuters and all known as feeders but uh, basically for for a goldman sachs perspective uh they are rely on their internal pricers of course i'll take a little break here reason being there are so many times when when there is a lot of complaints which have come about these pricers 2008 is a reason for that people came uh, the complaint of the pricers they said said prices are obsolete in nature they never priced it correctly had it been 2008 would have never happened and so on and so forth but these all are you know something which we should not discuss about because we do not have any facts this is something the reports now this pricer now here comes the role of a front office desk and how they manage the credit spread sensitivity in banking books they could has this with a single name cds multi name cds single trigger cds multi trigger cds 
single basket CDS, multi basket CDS, first till default, second till default, nth till default, and my two important favorites, which is asset swap and total return swap. They have plethora of option. Since the board size is pretty small, that is why I have taken only 10, uh, 10 or 11. But practically, bank like Goldman Sachs have huge amount of option to hedge that. At the end of the day, they will come out few reports, which is a part of FRTB also, which is fundamental review of the trading book. Example, they will come with VAR, value at risk. They will come with ES, which is expected shortfall. And they will come up with CSSBB. What is CSSBB? Example, if on an average basis, of course, uh, they have the minutest report also, but I'm, 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 I'm telling you an uh, overview. Goldman says, will even tell that boss, if on a minutest basis, if the, if the average CDS would hike by one bips, we would be losing $5 million. Or we would move towards that part of the credit risk. This is very important thing. IR double B and CSS double B is something which I think it's a very important step from Basel 3. And unfortunately, this is not for all the banks. So if we talk about Indian banks like SBI, PNB and so on and so forth, it is never for them. The reason being for them taking CDS is just like uh, for a very poor man, he is able to have a business class travel. This is just like that. India in Indian market, none of these are applicable. So it is quite better for it is quite better for uh, it is quite better for everybody out, right? To understand how C double S B B stands for, how banks are actually working, what is the role of pricer? Now we do offering the trainings as well as the implementation as well as the consultancy of both I double R double B and C double S double B. You are most welcome to have that, and of course you know our contact. The Skype ID is Rahul fifty three twenty seven. Our platform is www.fixedincome.global website is www.treasuryconsulting.in mobile is 9899242978 and email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in in case you have any queries please do come to us or alternatively you are most welcome to visit our fixed income platform here www.fixedincome.global thank you and have a wonderful time right